It's important that the uh, therapist or the leader of the group ensures that the participant who is doing the enactment integrates and accepts into the new self schema or the self concept, the new insights that they've attained in doing the enactment. This is based on the idea or the notion that when people do enactments, they actually say and do things which they have probably never said or done before, and they need to be reinforced and so they can be taken away as a part of the new expanded self. And of course, those new self schemas that come out of enactments are usually designed to change away from self-defeating or threatening self-statements to statements that I'm okay, that I am stronger than I thought and I move forward. So imagine that you're leading a group and you wanted to be sure that the person had really understood what change had taken place inside them. So you get them to externalize it and say it in the group, for example. When someone in the enactment was allowed to speak to another person who had shamed them or hurt them or abused them, they picked up over the years a felt sense of remorse and guilt and shame and silence. So they carried that as baggage. And so what they have to what they have to re say out loud to the group to re own it was quote the first one is this was never mine to carry because and so the leader of the group says with the person say after me and complete the sentence this was never mine to carry because you finish it and what the person will then say speaking from inside themselves because I was only six years old. And I shouldn't have had to take that responsibility, for example. So what we're really seeing here is the leader gives them incomplete sentences, which they complete, say, and own an experience. Another one would be for somebody who had felt that they had a tremendous amount of grief and sorrow uh, because they had to leave school early, they couldn't complete the school, and they felt that they were a failure. And they took that on as they quit school, they failed, they couldn't achieve. But in fact, the parents had moved away and there was no school for them to go into. So all this guilt and shame they carried needs to be given back and it goes this way. So when the enactment's finished, you say to them, what I want to give back is, so you ask the person to speak to if their parents are the double, if the parents are standing in in the enactment, they would say, finish this sentence. What I want to give back is, and they would frequently say in the enactment, I want to give back the doubt and the guilt that I carried, and it really wasn't mine, that was put on me. So the the four times that you can repeat that, two or three times, the person begins to believe that's really who they are. Another example is what I need want, must, intend, ought to do is, and they complete that sentence. And notice that this, the person completing the sentence says exactly what it is they need, what they want, what they intend, and then when they verbalize it and say it, they tend to own it. And then the last one, of course, is looking forward, they would speak out loud to the group, without this shame in my life, I will be able to, and then they finish the sentence, like, I will be able to have friends, I'll be able to speak up, I'll be able to laugh, I'll be able to enjoy life, and that's the therapeutic repair. Now, enactments are very action-oriented, and they're complex, and they have a beginning, and they have a middle, and they have an end, and they have people taking on particular key roles to stand in for the person. So often, the uh, main client may have had someone stand in as his double, may have had someone stand in as his brother, who he lost, or his parents, and they're all there. So all of these people assuming these particular roles, holding these roles, need to leave those roles and let the roles drop away from, because they're no longer the mother, no longer the father, no longer the brother, And they must go through this exercise called de-rolling and feedback. So de-rolling first is 
When the enactment is done and the person has said and done all the things they felt they should do, you ask every member who is taking a role to stand up and ask them to say, I am no longer this person, and they name this this character, I am Tom, or I am George, or I am Susan, and they reclaim themselves. They also, after the people have de-rolled in the group, the client then has heard from the other members what they observed in both in the role they were taking or observers in the group. And so there's a lot of learning goes on there. So what you ask them to do is to listen to the feedback that they heard from other group members, but then ask them to say to that member, did you really say this or did you say that? And then restate what they said. This is to ensure accuracy because you don't want them to misinterpret what's said. And it allows the speaker to say, well, I said this, but I said more than that. I, and they're allowed to correct what they said. So as a, to make sure that the client really, really is absorbing everything that's said to them and that's helpful, you ask them to say this way, what did you hear him or her saying to you or doing? What did you notice they're doing? What did you hear them say? And then if they repeat that back, mirror that back, the person can say, well, I didn't exactly say that. I really wanted to say this. So it allows for correction again. Finally, when we end the group with the feedback from others, no matter what presentation has occurred, the goal here is often expressed by, I'm no longer alone anymore. No matter what the, day, what the enactment has involved, they've had other people supporting them, they've had other people watching them, they've had other people helping them, and they feel supported and contained. And as I say in this slide, they say, we're not alone, we're together. And you can check very soon after the enactment when people are completed. And sometimes they refer to it as they have let go of baggage that they have carried. They always feel, say, I already feel lighter now. And that lets you know that the change is not only in the mind or the emotions, but the body feels a drop in and release of tension, uh, which has been holding them down. It makes them feel heavier.